much for watching Choices with Jeanette. I'm here at the El Dorado Ballroom for those yes. of you all who don't oh, know what yes. that is. Oh, yes. This time you were here at the age of 12. Honey, this is the spot where all the old timers say, Sister Girl, you ain't no amateur no more. You are a professional. A professional. <laughs> yes, and they taught me an awful lot that has carried me all through my career. Mm. And that was like 65 years ago. Wow, well, God has kept you. <laughs> he has kept you. Yes. Look, now, you sung with Louis Armstrong. That's right. How great was that? Oh, come on. Come on, be real. <laughs> Most fantastic. Oh Most goodness. fantastic. Oh you know, you're sorry when those kind of days end, you know. Mm. But uh, he had to rest a while. He had been doing it a long time before I got there, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, from 61 uh, to 68, from 61, I believe it was June 21st of 61. And then uh, till uh, December of 68, mm. you know. What kind of man was he? Oh, so different from what people acclaimed him to be back in the time. Mm -hmm. They called him an Uncle Tom back then, you know. But he was so far from it, it was unreal. Mm -hmm. You know, they never discussed about the things that he did. Why, I don't know. I couldn't give you an answer to that. But, you know, when the NAACP first started, he was donating $100,000 a year wow. back then. And no one told that story. I know. And at the same time, nobody's told the story that he built the entire Cardiac Wing to Mahal University. Mm. They have not discussed that either. They never talked about the things well, they, they, that he's done. They, they, However, it didn't bother him, you know. Really? No, it didn't bother him. But I remember when we were talking, we were talking about how Lena Horn Harry Belafonte yeah. was there at the march, and he wasn't. And what was his remark on that? Well, they asked him, why wasn't he there like Lena Horne and Harry Belafonte? And he said, what? Those people don't need marching. They need money. And then they said, uh, if I go down there and march, they liable to hit me in my chops. He said, and they, I, don't, I, I, I won't be able to blow my horn. They say. Well, you mean, Mr. Armstrong, you think they would hit you? He said, they'll hit Jesus Christ if he's black. So that was his reply. And in so many things, you know, that he was just, he spoke out about, mm. you know, and that he couldn't, he didn't bite his tongue. Mm. So how did you get to play with him? How did all that happen? Well, I was in Dallas working for Jack Ruby. And the Jack Ruby. The Jack Ruby. The, uh, the Kennedy Jack Ruby. The Oswald Jack Ruby. <laughs> Jack Ruby. Well, anyway, um, that ended, mm -hmm. and the Associated Booking Corporation office uh, had been paying attention to me that I didn't know. And they asked me, uh, who would I like to join, mm -hmm. Duke Ellington or Louis Armstrong? And right away, in split seconds, you know, that's where you got to think in this entertainment business. I said, Louis Armstrong. Well, what had gone through my head in that flying split second was the fact that uh, uh, Duke had 17 men. And with me, it would be seven men with Duke, with Louis. So, you know, the mood got to be different, okay? Mm -hmm. Plus the fact that uh, Duke didn't like to fly. Whenever he went overseas, he took a boat. Oh my well, I can't swim that far and I can't drink that much water. <laughs> so I think I'll fly. So, yeah, so I, that was just out for me. And I believe I made the right choice. But it was so nice that uh, Anita Moore, uh, Richard L. Thomas' mm -hmm. daughter, mm -hmm. she uh, filled that bill with Duke. Wow. And I thought that was just absolutely great. But you know what? All over the world, they respect those Texas musicians and those Texas singers. Really? All over the world. So who has Houston, Houston has had some great, I heard you talking about a gentleman just a few minutes ago. Houston has had some great people. Milton Hopkins is also here with you tonight. Oh yes, oh yes. And you know, uh, I did some work with Joe Sample. As a matter of fact, 
uh, Joe Sample's brother lived like four doors from me mm -hmm. when I first moved into my home 60 years ago. And uh, we used to do a little work around, but we hadn't done anything in so long till when we did the thing in uh, Galveston at the at the uh, opera house. He said to me, he said, "Good, you sure got that Texas sound." <laughs> So we're supposed to do some things sometime uh, uh, soon, but at any rate, you know, as I said, all over the world, there's they, something about that Texas thing. And these uh, Japanese people, you know, which my manager is here tonight, uh, they called him because they'd heard my CD uh, over there and uh, they got in touch with him and he came into America and they came to the house and they wanted to know. Came to the house yeah, honey, this after this old oh, girl. My goodness. <laughs> they know quality. I see when people shake your hand, they shake your hand and then they do a little curse to you. Isn't that something? That's nice, isn't Aren't it? You special? Oh my. <laughs> Aren't you special? But you 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 loved your father. Oh Lord, honey. And my mama too. And your mama too. Oh yes indeed. My mother was my daddy's soulmate, my daddy's helper. Uh, uh, you name it. They were two people that loved each other dearly. Mm. It's, uh, you see so little of that today. I never had it. Oh, well. I shouldn't say that, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but you had a good life. Well, you and might can say so that. Strong. Well, I tell you what, I'm very grateful for that. But I say to all of those out there that might hear your uh, interview, the basic thing to holding up in this business is just like anything else, eating right, trying to get enough sleep. Mm -hmm. And me, I learned to sleep in a tree. <laughs> me too. I you know, asleep. yeah. And uh, uh, I have never indulged in the drugs, the drinking. And I smoked very little. My smoking was to tolerate smoke because everybody in the band smoked. Mm. And they used to puff me out. And honey, when it's 60, almost below zero on a tour bus, you, you can't crack a window or anything, okay? So I learned to smoke to tolerate smoke. But when I left the band, I quit. Mm. <laughs> well, you know, we salute you. I thank you. We do. We salute you here in Houston, and, and we're glad you're still going on. I'm going to ask you a couple more questions, and I'm going to let you get, because you got to go upstairs and sing. I got to make it up them stairs, honey. Upstairs. Yeah. Give me your favorite song. Oh, girl, I have all kind of favorites now. I have all kind of favorites. That's a hard thing to that's say. Thing. Oh, that's a hard thing to say. Oh, that's a hard thing that's to hard say. Thing to oh, say. yes, it is. I didn't ask you who was your favorite artist. I just said your favorite song. Well, you know, I'm a multiple type person, a, a multiple type singer. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, when I first started out, oh, it was a chick named Linda Hopkins. Mm. Some of the people out here might not even know who I'm talking about. But honey, because she sang the blues. Mm. I'm lonesome in blues. Boy, and I tell you the truth, she would grunt. It was just something else, you know? Did you, so. Did you hear how she just. Did you hear that? Oh. Did you hear how she did that? I just moaned the blues. So, anyway, then when I kind of grew into a little more. And my brother, Ted Brown, Theodore mm -hmm. Brown, who's passed on now in 2007, he started to teach me breath control. And he started to uh, introduce me to varied uh, uh, type of songs, you know. So then, oh, Miss Ella Fitzgerald, honey. Mm. Mm. When I got turned on to her, that became another thing, you know. So, I, I, you know, so all over the world, they call me a, a bluesy jazz singer or a jazzy blues singer because I can't lose either one. I got to, you know, I'm, 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 I'm at them both, you know. <laughs> mm. So, you're here at the El Dorado Ballroom tonight. If we wanted to see you or we, they wanted to get in touch with you, what do they need to do? My manager is in Austin. His name is uh, Mr. Edward Stout.